All right, I wanna to talk to you about trespassers. Um, as you can see, this area that I am is in the mountains of uh, Montana. And uh, in without rule of law situation, <clears throat> there's a chance, a high likelihood that you're gonna see trespassers, actually a lot of trespassers, right? I want you to be careful because I've heard and I've read a lot of people that immediately go to, if you trespass on my land, I'm going to shoot you, right? Um, I don't think I would have a bunch of no trespassing signs on my land because then that would let people know that you were there and make them start reconning you. Um, but I want you to be real careful that if you see some people, you know, if they were moving over here in my background and I caught them and they were moving through here and say it was a family, maybe it was 20 people. You could tell there was kids with them. It wasn't just all military combatant age males armed. You know, it was, it was mixture, old, young guys, girls, uh, boys, girls, kids. You don't want to just take a pot shot at them, right? It'd be really easy for you to sit back with your 243 and say you're on my land and shoot one of them or maybe two of them. But the problem with that is, what happens if you did that to my group, right? What happens if you did that to a group of ex-military, uh, ex-law enforcement that knew how to, how to fight? Um, what do they do? They immediately flank you and they kill you. They kill you, they kill your family, and then they take what you have. Um, you think that you're the biggest and the baddest because just face it, everybody does. If you're a prepper and you have a gun and you're a man, you think that you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Um, even if you don't, even if you say, oh, I really don't deep down inside, you kind of do. That's why you're doing this, right? Um, you got to be careful with that because there's always somebody better. And even the best, as a matter of fact, um, I trained a lot with a team guy and uh, he's good, he's fast, he's still in incredible shape. Um, and when there was two of us, he couldn't beat us, right? So you, you need to think about that. When there's two or three or four, you can't beat them. They're, there's, it's, they overwhelm you with speed and, uh, and violence. So just because you think you're amazing, I promise you're not. Um, even if you are, even if you're an ex-operator, then if you are, you know better, right? So you recon those people. So the, here's your answer. You recon them. So now all of a sudden I notice that there's people coming across. So I immediately get all my crew to alert and I spread out. I start reconning them. I start to flank them in case I have to fight them, right? If, it's, if, it, if I can and they're just peaceful, I just let them walk through like, they were, like we were never there. If they stop and they start looking around, I may stop them. I'm not going to fire first, but I may stop them, have my guys ready to be trained on them, find out what it is they're doing. Have one of them come over unarmed to me. Let's have a conversation about who you are, where you are, why you are. I'm not going to give up any details of what I am. I'm just going to tell them I'm not a combatant. I'm not here to hurt you. Um, if at that point in time they start shooting, sure, you can fight. Um, but you don't want to fire that first shot. You want to keep the rules of engagement as if this that you still are in rule of law right like as if you were still going to get arrested after you do that that day that's what you want to keep the your your current mindset as with the exception of you go armed everywhere and you're very vigilant you're very paying attention you know what's going on you're aware of your surroundings you know what's going on now more than you ever did right and you're you're more cautious to do things than you ever were you're more cautious to go places by yourself or with just a few people than you ever were that's the difference but the rules of engagement stand the same you don't just shoot a trespasser for coming on your land for a couple of reasons you know the one is when this is all over because i think rule of law will end uh, I mean, you know, without rule of law, we'll end and people will go back to their, their lives as a rebuild, depending on what happens. And you will have to answer for what you did. And you may have to answer for what you did then, right? The town may get together and start building a little community and find out what you did and then, and then put you to death for that at that time or put you in jail for that. And I wouldn't blame them. Um, it would be what I did as a, as a town mayor or town leader. Um, because we're still Americans, even though we're in a difficult situation, we're still people, we're still Americans, and we can't just kill each other. 
Um, and the second portion of it would be that you don't know what that group is capable of. You don't know how big that group is. You don't know what all they can do and how bad they can hurt you because chances are that group's going to hurt you more than you hurt them. Um, and you think about it. If it was me and you shot one of my kids, my wife, my brothers, my dad, um, my mission at that point would be uh, you and what you had. So I want you to think about that. I want you to be careful about that um, and think, think, because, you know, work your way through those situations and, and think about what you would do if somebody did it to you, what you would do if you were in their place and, uh, you know, then decide whether it was okay for you to engage these people or not. You know, it all depends. I'm not saying that there are people that don't need to be engaged, but I'm going to say most people, especially at the beginning, don't. Anyway, ponder on it.